Hello, my dear Shifte and anyone listening to this recording. I want to share with you a thought, an idea, a Dvar Torah based on this parasha, something I've been thinking about this week. As we marked 30 days, Shloshim, since the terrible massacre on October 7th, Simchat Torah, a, a memory which will forever, a day which will forever stay with us. And I hope that this Dvar Torah gives us some strength, some builds, help to build our resolve, gives us some comfort as we fight for Medinat Yisrael. In this parasha, Chayi Sarah, things are not looking good for the Jewish people. Sarah, Abraham's lifelong partner, has died, perhaps from the trauma of the Akedah. Yitzchak is nowhere to be found, according to the Midrash. He's still on Haram Moriah. He's not married. It's not clear how... Avraham's family is going to move forward. Who is going to succeed him? Obviously, Yishmael is out of the picture. Avraham can't even agree to the terms of a burial site for Sarah without paying huge, a huge amount of money. And so things are, are actually looking pretty bad. And Avraham's old. He's old. His career is coming to an end. How are the Jewish people going to move forward? That is the looming question at the beginning of Parashat Chaye Sarah. Fast forward to the end. And somehow, Rivka comes into the scene. She's more like Avraham than her husband Yitzchak. She travels from, from Haran to come to Eretz Yisrael, travels to a place that she doesn't know to marry a husband she's never met. And she fills the void from the vacuum that's been created once Sarah has passed away. And suddenly, we go from a place of total despair, from not knowing what the future of the Jewish people is going to look like, to knowing that the next generation of Rivka and Yitzchak, they are a new couple, a power couple. And they are going to build the next generation of Am Yisrael. So what transpired here? What happened here? What took us from point A to point B? And the answer is this one anonymous character, this Evid. We're not even told his name. Rashi tells us his name, Eliezer Midamesek. But he's just called an Evid throughout the entire story. And the Evid is given a mission by Abraham. Go out of the Eretz Canaan. Go find a wife for Yitzchak. She has to agree to the terms. She has to come here. You can't bring Yitzchak over there. She's got to be filled. You know, she's got to align with the values of our family. Chesed, whatever it is. And Abraham makes him take a shvuan oath, hoping that he will be able to fulfill this mission. And boy, does this Evid fulfill this mission. He demonstrates total ne'emanut, total loyalty, to his master Abraham, he shows that he understands who the next uh, heiress to this uh, family is going to be. He looks for someone who has chesed. He reaches out to Hashem, to Davin. He, he demonstrates tremendous misirut nefesh, loyalty, steadfastness, commitment to the cause. And he, it's because of this lone Eved, who we don't even know his name, anonymous, he takes us from a place of total despair of uncertainty, to having confidence that the next generation of Am Yisrael will be built. When I think of this Eved, when I think of everything he went through, when I think of his steadfastness, his loyalty, his emunah, his commitment to the cause, I think of Am Yisrael today. I think of all of our chayalim who are fighting like lions in Aza and up north. I think of all of the soldiers who courageously went went down on Simchat Torah to just defend and do whatever they could for the people in the kibbutzim. And just literally, they were called at the moment and they showed up at the spot to try to save Jewish lives. I think of all the doctors and nurses who are helping the wounded. I think of all the Zaka uh, volunteers who have helped to collect the body and to give a dignified, to the degree possible, dignified burial to all those in need. I think of all the volunteers, all the people who have gone to farms to help around Otef Aza and in the north, all the people cooking meals. It's such, it's incredible. And all of the, all of Am Yisrael is engaged in this incredible mission, this misima, to protect our people, to protect our children, to protect our grandmothers and grandfathers. And everyone's doing it bitzni'ut, anonymously. Everyone's giving in the way that they can Everyone is steadfast to the cause. Everyone knows that it's up to us to take Am Yisrael 
from this generation to the next generation, and all the youth as well, who have gotten involved, all the chesed, uh, all the chesed, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the incredible chesed heroes that, that are all found throughout Am Yisrael today. And this is true here in Eretz Yisrael and in abroad. Our friends abroad who are also doing everything they can. Am Yisrael who are, I heard there are cowboys from Texas who showed up to work on the farms. It's, it's incredible. And this is the legacy of the Eved who connects the generations between Avraham and Sarah and Yitzchak and Rivka. And just like Am Yisrael experienced uncertainty many years ago when Sarah dies, we're experiencing some uncertainty, some, some doubts, maybe some feelings of despair and depression. But we have to know that what's going to connect us, what's going to bring us to the next stage, are the incredible heroes in our people who are doing everything they can anonymously, bitzni'ut, with love, with steadfastness to strengthen Am Yisrael and to take us forward into the next, the next generation. Be'ezrat Hashem, we shall have Bishorot Tavot, the Shabbat, and this coming week, all the Rechayalim should be protected, all the Chatufim, the Nedarim, the Shvuim should be returned. And Be'ezrat Hashem, we have great things to come for Am Yisrael. Am Hanetzach Lo Mepachid Nidera Haruka. Shabbat Shalom.